country myth versus fact. I'm going to put a statement up here, and you guys can tell me whether you think it is a myth or a fact. Are you ready? Here we go. Coyotes are easy to identify, myth or fact. Coyotes are actually pretty hard to identify. I had a resident in Aurora call me and tell me he had four wolves on his front porch. <laughs> wow. OK. So coyotes are often mistaken for wolves, foxes, and domestic dogs. And their actual weight is often overstated. Females in Colorado average about 22 pounds. Males average about 33 pounds. OK? So not as big as you. Why do we, why do we think they're bigger? The why do people tell us that I saw a coyote and it was 85 pounds? <laughs> Scared of it's a predator, right? And what does your brain do? I'm a scuba diver, and every time I see a barracuda, it's got to be nine feet, right? Because it's just that, that's the thing, that they just, our eyes want to make them bigger. But also, somebody mentioned their, their pelt, and they have this luxurious pelt that adds a lot of weight onto that little tiny coyote body, okay? But they're all legs. That's really it. There's not much else to them. They're pretty scrawny if you take all that fur off. All right, coyotes were here first. And what I mean by this statement, and we see this all the time, when there's a coyote conflict story, someone inevitably will chime in and say, well, the coyotes were here first, so we should let them do their thing. How many of you think that's a myth or that's a fact? What do you think? The coyotes were here in numbers in the suburban area before we came in and built our houses. Yes? OK. So this one's kind of a tough one, all right? We don't have numbers of how many coyotes were in the Jefferson County area before Jefferson County was uh, built up, OK? But let's just think about it for a second. Humans did a few things that made life as a coyote really awesome. What did we do? We removed wolves. And without the pressure from wolves, which wolves do not tolerate competition from coyotes, so they will kill them, they will chase them off, they don't tolerate coyotes. Coyotes are carnivores, myth or fact? This is a trick question. So by dentition, they are a carnivore. So I, by their teeth, OK, they are defined as a carnivore. But in practice, what do coyotes eat? Anything, right? OK, so I patrol at Crown Hill quite a bit. And what's interesting is to watch coyote poo through the seasons, all right? So it's kind of fun. It's like the seasonality of coyote poo. And, and in the fall, when all those beautiful neighborhoods around Crown Hill, they're all mature, they have beautiful tr fruit trees that have been there for 20 years, what are those producing? Things coyotes love, plums, mock apples, all that kind of stuff. So coyote poo at Crown Hill in the fall is this purple mess that looks almost like bear poo. In fact, every, t every fall we have people call in and I saw a bear scout at Crown Hill. I'm like, well, that would be weird. Um, but it's usually coyote. And then in the fall, in, in like August, when it's really hot and dry and, and the grasses are drying up, we get a lot of coyote scat with just straight up grasshopper exoskeletons in it. So they're eating a lot of insects, because how many of you see a ton of grasshoppers in August? You can't throw, you can't throw an old shoe without hitting a grasshopper. So what's great about coyotes, and what's vexing about them, is they are extremely adaptable. They are the ultimate flexitarian. They will shift their diet based on local conditions. If you have a crazy cat lady who's feeding feral cats from the backyard, and there's like 50 cats around, guess what the coyotes shift to? I'll eat cats. That's good. I can do that. So they shift their diet based on local availability, and they shift it throughout the year. So it's not just that they become a cat specialist, but as the fruit falls, they'll shift to fruit. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. The coyotes injured a dog. Next, it will be a child. Is that a myth or a fact? Some people are shaking their heads no. So why is that a myth? Because coyotes perceive pets. When they look at a dog, what is a coyote seeing? Yes, competition. Yes, generally competition. Unless it's a really toy breed, then they might be seeing food. But for the most part, think about it. They're a canid. They look out. They see this dog. You're walking your dog. The coyote's thinking, whoops, that's not cool. This is my area. I've got to defend my food resources. I don't want that dog in my community. Um, so they're seeing those dogs as competition. How coyotes perceive humans, so if you, if you say, OK, the coyote attacked a dog, and is it still safe for my child to play in the backyard? So that's an interesting question. First is, how old is that child? So we have some people who are like, well, if they come and steal a baby, I'm like, well, your baby shouldn't be alone in the backyard. That's, that's, that's a parenting issue. That's not a coyote issue. OK, so, so there's that. But uh, a 12-year-old or an 8-year-old child is not the same to a coyote as a dog. Does everybody understand that? 
very different pressures there. Now, we do have some anomalies. So we had the coyote in Broomfield that was attacking toddlers. Does everyone remember that? It was a few years ago. Um, it was little kids would be running along, you know, in front of their parents, and here would come this coyote, and, and it would take a bite sort of on their back buttock or the back of their leg. That's an anomaly. That's not normal coyote behavior, and that coyote was removed. So, so this is really not true, that just because a coyote goes after a dog, it doesn't mean children are next. Coyotes are naturally wary of humans, myth or fact. This is part of our research is, how many of you have seen coyotes in rural areas? How do they behave? Usually you only see their fanny, right? Or they're way far away and they're kind of watching, but they're very skittish. In urban areas, how many of you have seen an urban coyote that is pretty much dismissive of your presence? How many of you have one in your neighborhood right now? Okay. So urban coyotes, there is this notable difference in, in some urban coyotes where the presence of a human doesn't, doesn't phase them at all. And you go to rural areas and all you do is just open your car door and they're gone. And so is that a learned behavior? Because rural coyotes, what would make a rural coyote run from humans? Yes, in rural environments, people can manage coyotes using guns, that's okay. That's okay, as long as the human, they, they can demonstrate that they have some sort of loss that's coming from the coyotes. In urban environments, let's hope your neighbors are not plinking coyotes with guns from their back porch, because that's just not safe, all right? And usually, in most cases, it's not legal either. Most, most local municipalities have laws against discharging a firearm. So, so one of the things we're trying to look at is, is that sort of bold, I'm gonna stand here and look at people and not let them you know, they don't bother me, is that learned? Or is that something that comes with certain coyotes and their behavior syndrome? Or is it something that we just, it just depends on each coyote? We don't know. That's something we'd love to figure out through research. If I see a coyote in my neighborhood, I should leave it alone. And that is a myth, why? And if you see a coyote in your community, what's the appropriate response? So, and you're like, but wait, I like the coyote. I want to get a picture from my Facebook page. Okay, right? That's what you're thinking. But is that the appropriate response to stop and take a photo of it? And the reason is, is you are training that animal. Okay? You're training that animal to understand that humans are sort of a non-thing. That it's okay to walk down a sidewalk in the middle of the day in a suburban neighborhood. And what does that look like to scare a coyote off? What are some things you can do? Make yourself look, Make yourself look big. Yell. I take a couple steps at them. Put your arms up. Okay. You know, we'll talk more about hazing when we get to our study findings. But you know, a lot of people are funny about that. They're like, I don't want to look funny in front of my neighbors. Really? So you want to have a problem coyote? So again, think about what you're trading when you decide, oh, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna haze that coyote. There are other situations where you don't need to haze a coyote. Say you're hiking at a Jefferson County open space park and the coyote is over you know, 30 feet away in a field hunting mice. Do you need to run over and scare it? No. No, because it's doing what coyotes do. That's okay. And we don't want you to haze that coyote. It's behaving normally, it's doing what coyotes do, and we actually want coyotes to do that. All right, coyotes are nocturnal, myth or fact? Before suburban life and everything, coyotes are day active or crepuscular, dawn and dusk active. In urban and suburban environments, we actually create a terrifying world as we get up and start moving around. What's terrifying about the human world? Cars. Cars are the number one cause of adult coyote fatalities in suburban areas, hands down. So vehicle collisions, but also we're loud, we have dogs. Some of the dogs are very aggressive towards coyotes, so coyotes tend to, in urban and suburban areas, kind of hide out during the day. But what you want to be aware of is that in urban environments, if you see a coyote during the day, is it necessarily sick or injured or something like that? No. So urban coyotes will come out during the day, particularly during pupping season, because they need to be out hunting uh, food for pups. So here's a couple of coyotes on a very busy urban, you know, 10 foot wide sidewalk trail. A few hours from now, this trail will be packed, but at 4.04 in the morning, this couple can walk down this trail and just enjoy each other's company. And this one, this is the same trail, and this is 10.45 a.m. So this is a little different. This guy's out in the middle of the day, again, on a busy um, suburban trail, but this is snow, so again, this may not have been as busy this day, but this coyote's behavior is a little bit more concerning than these two. Coyotes thrive in urban environments, myth or fact. Yeah. So it's a myth and a fact. So coyotes thrive in urban environments. 
and they tend to rely on the undeveloped patches within those urban environments. So again, if you've got a coyote and you're in a very urban area, what do they need in that urban area? They need a ditch, perfect answer, yes. They need a ditch or they need a park or they need a woodland or they need some sort of an undeveloped brownfield. They need some sort of undeveloped area where they can conduct their business, okay? And preferably if those are connected by a ditch or some sort of, we had one in the north part that was using a culvert to go underneath a major highway. All right, coyotes are passive creatures, myth or fact. So this is where coyotes can get into conflict with humans and with our pets particularly. So coyotes defend territories and food resources from each other and um, from other species. So they don't tolerate foxes, for example. If there are foxes in an area and coyotes colonize that area, a lot of times people say, I never saw the foxes again once the coyotes show up. There's two reasons for that. One is a savvy fox is gonna keep a lower profile once the coyotes move in. Also, if it doesn't choose to do that, the coyotes may actually kill the foxes. So, so they don't tolerate other middle management predators like those. So it's kind of interesting stuff if you think about that. That's how coyotes get into trouble with domestic dogs because they see that domestic dog as competition and want to remove it. And the way they do that is through killing. We can get rid of the coyotes, myth or fact. So you see this a lot. Every time there's a story about a coyote kills a dog in someone's backyard, someone writes in and says, just get rid of him, okay? Well, there's some trouble with that. So the myth is you can't get rid of them because there will always be a replacement coyote. So you remove a coyote and you don't change anything about habitat or human behavior, what will you get in its place? Another coyote, why? Because remember that lifestyle, we have resident coyotes and then who's out there cruising around sometimes 364 miles of cruising around looking for a habitat, the transient coyotes. So when you remove a coyote, and actually one situation in Utah, uh, a male was killed by a rancher and the female actually left her territory, found a male and brought him back. Like, you're coming with me, buddy. And brought him back and they lived happily ever after as coyotes do. So, so the thing is, the important thing to remember when you're talking about coyotes is very simple math. One minus one equals one. Okay, so when you have a well-behaved coyote in a community, it behooves you to leave that coyote there. Because if you remove it, it might be replaced by a coyote that's bolder, maybe dog aggressive, maybe all kinds of things that aren't gonna work in that community. So we always say, if you have a well-behaved coyote, leave it there. Keep it trained, you know, haze it, do all the things right, but don't remove it because the coyote that comes in after it could have a different behavior syndrome and could be more problematic to the community. In general, people love coyotes. Is that a myth or a fact? It's a myth. It's a myth. So one of the things that's interesting is a lot of folks are sort of indifferent to coyotes until they have some sort of conflict with a coyote. And then all of a sudden they change to, whoa, they're bad. All right? So it's interesting. To, and then a lot of people really love coyotes. They think they're fantastic. And they think they're a great part of the ecosystem. Again, I'm not here tonight to tell you how you should feel about coyotes. I'm here tonight to help you understand how you can mitigate conflict with coyotes.